Hello, I'm Ricky McMillan for Equestrian Life. Today uh, we have the Grand Prix, the first day of the team dressage at the London 2012 Olympics. Already it's been an absolutely wonderful day. The, the first two sessions are now complete. We're halfway through the first day. We have 50 competitors over two days riding the Grand Prix. The best seven teams plus 11 individuals will go through to the Grand Prix Special. Um, the combined totals of the Grand Prix and Grand Prix Special will decide the team results. We have in all 10 teams. Five of the countries with teams have a fourth rider, an individual rider, and we have 11 countries represented by individual riders. Altogether, 23 nations, a record for dressage. We have our first competitor from Africa, uh, Yassin Rumini, uh, riding Floresco. We have Horeshi Hoketsu from Japan, a, a young 71 years. He's riding the 15-year-old Falkenstein II mare. Hiroshi Haketsu rode in Tokyo Olympics quite some years ago. Um, he also rode in Hong Kong, in Beijing Olympics, and now in London 2012. Uh, we have Anki van Grunsten coming off three individual gold medals. The winner of the individual dressage in Sydney, in Athens, and in Beijing. Uh, she's riding her double gold medal individual winning horse, Salonero. Today we've seen um, wonderful performance by Anne van Olst riding Mr. Clearwater. This is her second horse. Unfortunately, her, her number one horse, Typhoon, had to be withdrawn uh, just yesterday. She did a great performance first into the arena to put Denmark uh, off to a very good start in the team competition, 71.3. We then had Yasin Romini, 64.75. We saw Jackie Brooks and Nero, uh, a D-Day gelding, doing a great job. Um, the the grey, perhaps it could be even more expressive, but a really obedient test, um, small mistake only. Uh, we saw Debrino, individual, uh, with Annabelle Balkenhol for Germany. Wonderful horse, fabulous canter, very strong in the Piaf Passage, but unfortunately a little tense to begin, breaking into the canter after the uh, uh, extended trot before it and just before the first of the trot half passes. Nonetheless, a great score of seven, a little over 70%. We had our own Christy Oatley Mist riding Cly, doing a great job, the 13-year-old Coletto Gelding looking absolutely wonderful. Christy's experience showing um, the extended trot uh, uh, looking great, the extensions generally. A little tense, however, um, today, sometimes a little short in the neck, and sometimes the transitions for the example of Piaf Passage could have been a little stronger, um, and a small mistake after the extended canter before the change. So certainly room for an improvement and a, a great score for the Australian team uh, to get us off to a good start, uh, over 68%. We had um, uh, from Spain their first competitor, Grandioso, Jose, Jose Manuel, Martin Dox. Um, this horse has a real strength in the Piaf Passage and also in the Cantor Pirouettes. Perhaps he could swing a little more over the back in the trot work. After that, into the arena, we had Carl Hester with Euphopia. Now, he finished an absolutely thunderous applause. The, the British uh, public absolutely lapping up every part of it. It was a wonderful test, elegant, there's a freedom of movement, um, a wonderful expression uh, from this horse. Uh, he had a small mistake uh, uh, at times. Um, however, he had a real highlight in the Cater Pirouettes and the Piaf Passage. The, the walk is, is not the, uh, the absolute best, but his mistake came where Christie's came at the end of the extended canter. So, after our first break, uh, we had Jan Ebeling riding the Argentinus mare, Rafalco, the 15-year-old mare, uh, part owned by the, the wife of Mitt Romney, the presidential candidate in the US. It was a great test. Um, uh, perhaps it, it, it could be even more expressive, but uh, more or less mistake-free. So a little over 70%, and um, a great beginning for the US rider, Jan Ebeling. 
the US uh, has over the years been represented by German-born competitors that have subsequently become American citizens, and, and yarn is, is, uh, uh, has, has made this change. Then came Minitelga with the very elegant Sandro Hit gelding, um, I'm sorry, stallion, the 11-year-old. Um, he's a horse that's blind in one eye, and Mina did a great job. He, he had an almost spook at the end of the extended canter. Then some mistakes came. He had a mistake in the one-time changes, and unfortunately in the left canter pirouette there was quite a misunderstanding. Nevertheless, he's an absolute quality horse, and overall their score was 67.477. Then we had for, for Poland, uh, Michael uh, Rapovitz riding at random. Michael also rode in Hong Kong. Um, this horse could perhaps be more express, so if you uh, take a little more weight behind uh, in the canter and the outer passage work, score of 66.915. And then came Anki van Grunsven. Anki, this is her seventh Olympics competing in the dressage. That's a record. And she already has seven medals, as do Isabel Wirth and Rainer Klimke, both German riders. If Anki wins a medal, and she may well after this wonderful start today, she will have eight dressage medals, and that will be a record. So Anki, absolute star of dressage. It was a wonderful test. There's certainly been some concern that Salonero, at 18 years of age, is perhaps not the horse he was, but really it was a, a great test, but 73.48. But then next in the arena, the 10-year-old on Frederico Mare for Germany, the first team rider for Germany, Dorothy Schneider at Diberoyer. Absolutely wonderful. Harmonious, uh, without mistake, 76.27. A great job for this young mare. And then was Hiroshi Haketsu. Uh, ride and whisper. Um, Japan has a, a, a wonderful uh, record in equestrian events, winning a medal in show jumping. Baron Nishi won a medal at the first Los Angeles Olympics. Um, Hiroshi Haketsu at 71 years of age. Uh, we know he works really hard. He keeps himself in great shape. At 71, if he was a judge, he'd no longer be eligible. Um, but look, he did a great test, one of the best I've seen him ride, 68.723. So that's how it stands at the moment. Uh, in first place so far, Carl Hester, riding Utopia. Uh, great work. Uh, Utopia hasn't been in the best shape. Uh, he's a little um, uh, short on for competition experience this year, but Carl riding his absolute, um, uh, uh, in his fabulous way, um, an elegant performance. Uh, the young Diva Royale, Dorothy Schneider, Aggie Van Grunsven, and Van Oltz. That's how it looks at the moment, one, two, three, four. And it won't be long, we'll be back to the second half of today. The last into the arena um, this afternoon in European time will be Damon Hill. Um, perhaps a, a favorite, one of the favorites. It's really exciting at this Olympics. It's certainly very open. Um, uh, everyone's wondering how the team medals will go, but also the individual medals. We're so fortunate to have quite a number of horses all looking like they can do in the high 70 percent. Um, I, I think that uh, it's quite exciting for dressage to have 23 nations compete. As always, things are buzzing. Um, to the Dutch press, Chef Janssen, um, can I say, stirred things up a little bit. He announced that uh, Totalus will be in his stable uh, training um, after the Olympics when he resigns his position as Dutch coach. So um, one of Germany's leading riders, Matthias Raat, um, will be training uh, with Chef Janssen. Uh, a little bit disappointing um, for Denmark, losing one of their, their big hopes, a uh, second horse in his declare order, but doing a great job. Also very disappointing for Spain, Beatrice Ferrer Salat, uh, unfortunately was unable to compete. Her horse was, was lame, um, but she's here now as a reserve with her second best horse. Well, let's see what the next session brings.